Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to episode number 35 of Lead to Greatness, where we believe in helping others reach their greatest potential, and together we can change the world. Today on Lead to Greatness, we have Patrick Verano. Patrick is the president of Emory Leadership Group and hosts a weekly podcast called Learning from Leaders. Patrick has trained extensively in the area of emotional intelligence influence, and personality. Patrick has focused his career in helping individuals, teams, and organizations reimagine what it means to lead and succeed on a more conscious level. Get your notepad, get your pen to take notes. And here's Patrick with Rise Above Your Best. Cedric Francis, and you're listening to Lead to Greatness. Uh, I lost actually both of my parents to um, different forms of cancer about a year and a half apart from each other when I was 17 and 18 years old. And I look back on that now as that really shaped a lot of, of the direction that I went in terms of, of where I am now. Wow. So 17, 17 and 18, you lose both parents. I mean, this is a this is a time of transition when you're getting ready to transition from, you know, teenager to adulthood. What was life like when, you know, at that moment, I mean, you graduated in high school and, and you're getting ready to start life and your parents is not there. I mean, let's, yeah. what was that like? Um, coming from a large family and we were all very close and okay. we still are, um, but it was one of those. So let's see, my mother was diagnosed with, with breast cancer. So I was a sophomore when she was actually diagnosed. And it was the first time that I had ever experienced anything like that in terms of, you know, a, a crisis situation or a challenge like that. And, you know, Cedric, to be honest with you, I, I just put it aside. It was like, I pretended like it didn't even exist um, up to the point that literally the week end, uh, my mother was, was going to die. Um, I was getting ready to go out with my friends. And my dad said, you can't, leave the house this weekend, your your mother's going to die this weekend, because she was, she was bedridden at home. And believe it or not, I was oblivious to it. Like, I just didn't want to admit that that was going to happen. Wow. Um, so, you know, we fast forward a, a year and a half out. And I had just graduated from from high school, and you know, I had all these things going for me. And I was getting ready to go to Fordham University down in New York City. And in August, um, my dad had to go in for a procedure and come to find out he had uh, pancreatic cancer. And if you know anything about pancreatic cancer, it's very fast, generally. I, I knew at that point, like he didn't even have to say anything. It was, as soon as I heard that word, I immediately went back to my mother and knew that this thing was not gonna have a positive, a positive outcome. And I remember saying, I don't wanna go to school. Like, I don't wanna go to school in the fall. And my dad said, absolutely not. You're going, to, you're, you're going away to school. And I came home like every three weeks during that period of time. And he, and he passed away um, on December 1st. So I came home, uh, had the funeral, went back to take finals. And I remember leaving um, the Bronx, getting ready to get on a train to come home for, for winter break and thinking, oh, I'm, I'm an orphan at this point. Never had thought about that. But again, I look at those things now that's shaped who I've become. And one of the talks that I will give to high school kids says, your past is your power, right? Our mm. past is our power. That's all we have. Wow. wow. I mean, if you think about it, Cedric, right? When we just started this interview is now in the past. Mm. All we have to go on is our past. Too, I think too many times people look at the mistakes they made, the challenges, and they try and run from them. And to me, it's, it's an opportunity to say, what am I going to learn from this? How do I grow? That's your, that's your power. Wow, that is that that is so amazing. I mean, even I mean the story. How was your process with that? Um, it was horrible to begin with. To be honest with you, I made I made a lot of mistakes. I was I was drinking a lot. I was doing drugs all through you know college and promiscuous and you know just a lot of a lot of bad choices yeah. that I was making. But there was always something internally that that kept me coming back to sort of getting back on track. And again, I look at those things now, and as much as I cringe when I think of those at times, I know that those those two shaped how I turned out, who I become. And I think I'm, 
it, it allows me, I think, to connect with a, a wider range of people because I've, I've been in that space too. You're in the midst of all this. I mean, like you say, drugs, alcohol, and it, it, you know, partying and things like that. It's like, what, what grounded you to, to back back for and say, you know what, I got to do something different. There has to be a better way. This is not going to last. I need to change real quick or I'm going to be, because I'm pretty sure in that process, you've seen something happen to some people. So at what point, what grounded you to say, you know what, I need to, I need to, I need to do something different. So there are two things. One is, uh, is, and I talk about this as part of my own journey is after my mother died, um, again, I was sort of going through a period there where there was a lot of drinking and, you know, in high school partying and things like that. I went on spring break. So as a, let's see, as a senior, I'm going on spring break. We're down in South Carolina and we're at a gas station and we're getting gas. The f Me and three buddies are down there at, a, at one of the friend's parents' condos and we're getting gas, getting ready to go to a party down on the beach. And there was a gentleman next to us in a really nice car. Um, I remember that. And he looked over and started to have a conversation with me about Zig Ziglar, about that. a book, See You at the Top. And I'd never yes. heard of Zig Ziglar before yes. at all. Like it gives me chills when I, when I tell that story again, is that he started talking about See, see You at the Top and saying, you know, you, you would benefit, like get that book. And I remember going home and going to the library and getting that book out and reading it. And it wasn't sort of like a, a transformation all at once, but what it started to do to me was realize that we've got the power inside of us. Yes. Right. And it was like, it was like, I felt like my mother had sort of somehow sent this individual there for me to brace me for what was coming with my dad. Because even though I sort of went down some bad paths, there was always that piece of me. And granted, my family was also very strong too. I looked at all of them and I didn't want to let them down either, right? Because they were all being successful and living their lives and I didn't want to let them down. But the two of them, I, I look back to that moment with Zig Ziglar as, as really being serendipitous. The book, See You at the Top by Zig Ziglar. My, it was the same thing with me. My brother-in-law gave me this book. It was this red book. He gave me this book. I didn't know, same thing. I didn't know who Zig Ziglar was. He gave me this book and told me to read this book. I read the book and the same thing. It didn't change right away, but it really, it, and that book did something to me. What was the journey, you know, from that part of partying and eventually getting into leadership? Yeah. So it was interesting, you know, because obviously you start to think back and in, in growing up, I was I was captain of the hockey team that I was on. I was president of my senior class. So there were, there were things along the way that I felt like I, I just enjoyed, I guess, taking on that role or whatever. But um, as I went through my career, I started working for uh, in the biotech industry and I'd been there for about 15 years. And, and what was interesting about that was that there were a lot of opportunities that opened up in terms of development, you know, a lot of trainings that they would, they would allow you to go through. And I got really involved with um, different types of sales training, leadership development training, and always looked at it from the standpoint of the research. Because in my industry, it was all about, if you wanted to get somebody to prescribe a certain treatment for, for an illness, you had to be able to demonstrate what's the research that backs us up. So I took the same approach to leadership of saying, there's gotta be research that backs up why these behaviors work and, and why do others not work? Mm. And that was my whole approach. And it's been that way ever since. Everything that I do in terms of the workshops that I do, the, the models that I put together is all about, I, I continually think of that question of like, what's the research that backs up why this should work this way? doesn't always, right? I mean, just like drugs don't always work the way they're supposed to. Um, but you know that there's enough research behind that. This is this is the best course of action we have at this point. And I take the same approach to leadership development. Yeah, awesome. And then, and then, and then your life is also an example of it as well. well. Let me let me ask you this question. So so as far as leadership, you know, getting into the, you know, the leadership, that journey, how has, um, how has failure shaped you as a leader? Yeah. So back to the conversation around growing up, right? Um, those struggles that, that we run into, those are the things that really create, I think, the, the foundation for, for how we lead. Our past is our power. 
Um, when I looked to, I started my company in 2008. And uh, if we can think back to 2008, well, that was the last financial crisis. Right. Yeah. I was, uh, I had, wow. I had just left a, a biotech company that um, had a buyout and I had a severance of about a year. And I thought, here's, if ever there was a time for me to start this business, it's now. Yes. And I immediately enrolled in a coaching program through a group called IPAC. I licensed a programmer in emotional intelligence. I was right into it. And then literally within six months, the stock market crashed and all of my severance was in stock. So basically I went from about a year severance to only having about three months of severance left. Wow. And I was thinking, how am I going to do this? My youngest child was just turning one. We just bought a new house. My wife stayed at home with our kids, all these things. And I'm like, how am I going to do this? And uh, I remember I, I immediately went back and started looking at, you know, getting back into the industry. How do I side hustle to be able to make this work? And to me, I looked at it. This was an opportunity for me to really practice what I was, what I was all about. How am I going to pull this off? You're starting the business in 2008. <laughs> in the middle of financial crisis. And, and this is the thing lead to greatness. I want you to listen to this. His story, when he first left the job, he had a year, one year, one year or seven, one, one year where, you know, the money wasn't supposed to be a problem. One year turned into three months, where it went down, decreased to three months. So it's like in three months, you have to make a decision. So the plan that you had in a year, that changed to three months. So it's like, man, I got to do something. I mean, you have to start thinking different and quickly. Yeah. So, you, and, and again, I think that's important when we think about that in terms of like, there are always going to be those things that get in your way. I once remember hearing, uh, I think it might've been Tony Robbins talking about there's resources and there's resourcefulness, right? Yeah. We all potentially lack resources. I'm too tall. I'm not tall enough. I don't have enough money, the right education, but we all have equal access to resourcefulness. <sighs> right? You can either pack it in. And, and Cedric, I remember, I remember being at lunch and going across the street to a Burger King and the dollar menu was there. And that was all that I had. Mm -hmm. Like literally what one thing can I get off of this dollar menu? Yeah, yeah. Because, and we were, we were in such financial strength before that. And it just, it evaporated. How are we going to deal with this? And again, I look back at that now and think that provided me with such a springboard because what it did was I actually got back into the industry for a short period of time. And once I did that, I then focused on how am I going to, how am I going to make this work the next time I, I jump the next time I get out, I spent all of that time in education. I got my master's during that period of time when I got back in. It was like, I'm coming back out and I'm going to use this to my advantage. And I started side hustle. Wow. And this, this reminds me of, of, of great athletes. I mean, they say for instance, somebody, you know, they lose the championship. They first time going to the championship. They don't have any experience. You know, they're a rookie going to the championship and they learn things from the championship and they go back and instead of saying, I failed, they go back and look at, okay, what went wrong? what went right? How can I make this thing better next time? And that's exactly what you did. You went back, you looked at all, you went back, looked at the picture, you looked at the visual film, not on the screen, but in your mind. And you went back and you got everything you need, put everything in line and you made it happen. Man, that is awesome. That is awesome. And that is amazing. And we all have that ability. I mean, that's the beauty of this is we, we all have that ability to be able to to do that. I mean, this year is, is another example of that. Yes. <laughs> yes, sir. Perfect example. What are we going to do? You're either, you either are going to roll over and let this thing get the, get the best of you, or you say, okay, how am I going to navigate this going forward? What have I learned from this that I can come back and provide more value wow. based on the current environment? Yes, 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 yes. I, I, I want you to, I want you to speak to that listener right now that may have in the beginning of this year, they started, so they, they started something and things are not going right right now. I mean, they, they're in that place where they say, you know what, this is not it. I can't do anything. I'm throwing in the towel. I'm giving up. I don't want to part of this anymore. 
what would you say to that person right now? Yeah. Uh, you know, this is where you got to really do some, some soul searching. You got to dig and say, why do you want this? Mm. Um, so when I set, when I work with individuals to set goals, I use a model called set and it's three components to it. It's in terms of your goal specifics, what is exactly that you want to do? So whatever that is for that person that's out there, are you specific? Were you really specific in terms of what you want? Not just maybe I want to be healthier this year. I want to make, you know, six figures or seven figures, but what exactly is it that you want to do? And then the E in that model is emotion, right? And I'll get to that in a minute. But the last part is time bound, right? It's to say, I'm going to have this goal achieved by this date, right? So it's specific, and it's got a time bound to or a time stamp to it. The, the E is the most important part for me. It's the emotion. Because if you can't say, why that is so important to you, then there are going to be so many things that are going to come along the way that you're going to be like, forget it. I, I, I'm, I give up. I don't want to do this. Ask yourself five times why you want that goal. Because I could say, I want to be healthy for this year. That's not very specific. But I, if I say, I want to lose 10 pounds by, you know, March 1st, Okay, now I've got two of those. Well, why do I want to lose 10 pounds? Well, because my youngest son is playing sports now. And I used to coach and I want to be active and be able to coach again, and I need to be in better shape. Okay, well, why do you want to coach? Well, because I'm seeing my son less as he gets older, and I want to find time that we can spend together. Okay, well, why do you want to spend more time together? Because he's going to be out of the house before I know it. And I know that by the time our kids are 18 years old, we've spent almost 90% of the time that we're going to spend with them throughout their lives. So I want to make sure that I'm building a strong foundation for us now so that when he leaves the house, we're going to, we're still going to have a good relationship. Right. And well, why is that important? Because that's my legacy. Now I've gone from 10 pounds to a, this is about a legacy, not about losing 10 pounds. Oh, that is a knowledge bomb. Oh my goodness. You just stacked the wise. That is so amazing. I mean, it's just it's it's like a it's like a hamburger. I mean, you just put the <laughs> triple, quadruple meat on the hamburger to eat. I mean, you got I mean this big burger. This is so awesome. I mean, you just stacked the wise. It's like one wide, but you get so it's like all these things, and every last one of them is the truth. Oh because my god. When you yes. do that. It just it reinforces like this is not just some whimsical thing that I want. There's there's emotion behind this. Yes. In terms of I want this because if we don't have that, when I walk into the house and there's Oreos and oranges sitting on the counter, and I get to choose one of them, it's going to be harder for me to grab an a, an Oreo when I'm thinking, wait a minute, um, I got ten pounds on the line here. Go with the orange. Stacking the wise. I mean, I I. I... I hear why, but stacking what that, that that's amazing. That's yeah, amazing. It, it does make the difference, right? It just, it's like, it's like the mortar between the bricks. Mm. That's what holds the whole thing together. Right? That's holding it together. Oh, man, it's gonna be like a World War Two on this podcast, <laughs> man. You can keep it up. Man, this is awesome. This is awesome. I love it. I love it. Man, it's knowledge bombs after knowledge bombs, right? You got a series of knowledge bombs right there. Man, it's awesome. Awesome. Let me ask you this question. I'm looking, I'm looking behind you and this is, is sticking out. You have on the back, rise above your best. your best. What does that mean to you? Yeah. Um, it's everything to me. Rise above your best is everything. And, and I mean that from the standpoint of um, when we talk about rise above your best, um, I think too many of us, anybody that's been involved in coaching or, you know, or working with other people in terms of development, what do we do? We look at what somebody else has, right? Oh, look at, they're so successful. I will never be as successful as them. Uh, look at the house that they live in. Look at, look at the, the boat that they, you know, look at all of these things. Look at the clothes that they wear. I, I can never be that successful. And when we do that, we're putting ourselves up against somebody else. And we're, we're going to lose that game. Now, the flip side of that is, I, I'm competitive. I love to look at other people and use them as sort of as rabbits right. to chase, yeah. but they don't decide my worth. Yeah. But if I don't get to them, 
I'm no less of a person because, you know, they're, but it's fun to chase. Right. But rising above your best is we can always improve ourselves. I can't improve maybe to get to where somebody else is right now, but I can do something tomorrow that I didn't do today. Right. Even if it's one more rep of something, it's rise above your best, nobody else's. And when we, it's like a horse that's running down a track that has the blinders on the side. So there's no distraction. I'm like, boom, I'm going. Yes. Right. Your best, nobody else's. And that's hard to do. Right. I, I know at times I'm like, boy, I wish I could, you know, I, I wish I could be where they're at. And I think Cedric, in the environment that we're in right now, where so many things are on social media that are filtered and, you know, the Lambos and the, you know, the mansions and all this stuff that, that puts up this false idea of who's, of who people are, that when you get caught up in that, it starts to weigh on yourself in terms of your own self-worth. I'm not chasing, I'm not chasing you that way. I'm working on myself because I can control that. I can't control anything else. It's so important today. And, and I think for younger kids too, I know I, I do this with my kids. I constantly having these conversations about, be careful what you see on social media, because you're, you know, you're not seeing the real picture of really what goes on. Um, especially if, it, if it's athletes or others that have put a lot of work in, right? We see the just the glory part, you don't see all the all the the grind yeah. that went into this yeah. and our businesses are the same thing. And that, that, that is, that is, <laughs> that is so true. I mean, people see the rise and um, even the thing, you know, a lot of people, you, you, you see somebody just, it seems like they just came out of nowhere overnight success, but man, it's, yeah. Or they've got a great relation. God, I wish I had the relationship they have with their spouse or with their kids. Um, Didn't happen overnight. Yeah. They worked at it. Yeah, exactly. All of it take work. I, finding it, all of it takes work. What are some leadership growth tips, uh, tools, advice that you can share with the Lead to Greatness community to help us reach our greatest potential? Um, so for me, uh, there's a model that I use. It, it is, uh, I would say it's my signature model that I work with a lot of my clients on, but it's, it's about relationships. To me, that's, that's leadership. A, a couple things. One is, there's a quote that I'll often use, um, and it's actually attributed to Dolly Parton, um, is the one that actually said, it said, if your actions inspire somebody to do more, dream more, learn more, or become more, you're a leader. And for wow. years, I was using it as uh, John Quincy Adams. <laughs> and it's not. If you look it up and, and do some digging, you'll find out that it was actually Dolly Parton. But if you think about it, in that, in what she said, right, it's my actions that inspire. It's not my title. It's just actions that inspire. And it's, it's inspiring somebody to do more, to dream more, to learn more, or become more. Mm -hmm. That's leadership, yeah. right? That's not about a title. That's, I can do that at home. I can do it in the community, or I can do it at work, yeah. right? So from that, what I, what I do is talk about it in terms of we build bridges. We build relationship bridges with people. Yeah. And for me, there's a model that I use called cables. So each one of these six behaviors in this model of cables, it, it, it's an acronym, right? So each one of these letters is a behavior that when we act in these ways, we build stronger bridges, we build a stronger relationship with somebody else. And the reason that's so important is if you think about it, the Golden Gate Bridge. So the Golden Gate Bridge is about three feet in diameter, that one, what looks like one cable that one, runs tower to tower but it's really about 30,000 individually wrapped cables, so a little less than that. To me, that's no different than our relationships, uh, is that the more we behave in the right ways, the stronger the relationships we build. Yeah. So the more, the more stress they can undertake because we've, we've done the work, right? We've built this thing up so strong that we can travel anything across this bridge, mm -hmm. right? And what I mean by that is I, we're going to make mistakes, right? We're going to do the wrong things at times. We're going to disappoint people. I, that to me is like going up to the Golden Gate Bridge and cutting 100 cables on that bridge. Nothing's going to happen to that. It'll get repaired, but nothing, the integrity of that bridge is going to be fine. Yeah. 
And it's the same thing with these behaviors. So the first one I talk about is congruence. That's the C in cables. You've got to walk the talk, right? Is what we say and what we do, is it the same thing? That's our first behavior, regardless of where we are in terms of inspiring people. The next one is around appreciation. That's the A in that cable model. And appreciation has two parts to it. One is appreciating other people, diversity, right? We don't do enough of that. When we don't appreciate other people and what their diversity is and what they can, what they can provide us, mm -hmm. then we, we create disengagement. We create engagement in ways that aren't very productive. And we've seen that this year, right? The other part of appreciation though, is recognizing um, people for, for the positive things that they do, celebrating each other, right? We don't do enough of that, right? In, in, in any setting with our, our family setting, if our kids are doing things that are, that are positive, how many times do we overlook maybe some opportunities where we could appreciate what things that they've done as opposed to we look for when they make a mistake and we, we pick that up. Or in an office setting, we do that, right? We nail you for what you don't do right, but we don't take enough time to appreciate what you do right. So I call those RPMs, recognize positive moments. Those are your RPMs, right? So next we move on to belongingness. That's the B in that model, which is around creating inclusion. We need to create inclusion, especially as leaders. And you think of any environment that we're in when people feel as though they're pushed outside of the group, bad things happen. Mm. We're pack animals, we need each other. Yeah. That if we were to go back thousands of years and you vote somebody outside of the island or off of the, you know, outside of the group, what happens? They die, right? You can't survive without the group. It's no different today, Cedric. We need each other. The whole idea when I hear people say, oh, they're self-made, baloney. Nobody is self-made. Absolutely. You're self-motivated maybe, yeah. but you can't be self-made unless you birthed yourself, you know, <laughs> made your own clothes, yeah. taught yourself, built your house, the yeah. road you drive on, right? It, we need each other. Yeah. And I think the faster we recognize how much we need each other, we create belongingness. Listening is the next one. That's the L in the behavior model. And when we talk about listening, it's, it's really working on how do you listen to understand versus listening to undermine, which is what we've seen all year long, yeah. listening to undermine, not listening to understand. That's a different type of listening. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the E in the model is around empathy. How do I put myself in your shoes? Imagine what it's like to be Cedric right now is, is where you are. Yeah. If, if I don't do that, if I don't, and I can never know exactly, right? I can't know what you're going through, but if I don't make an effort to try and see things from your perspective and be where you are, we're lost. Yeah. Yeah. And then the last one is specifics. It's about clear expectations. How do we set clear expectations for each other? What do we need from each other? If we're in a work setting, this is where I see the biggest dysfunction in the work that I do with organizations is the breakdown, I would say 90% of the time, comes out of not having clear expectations. What we thought we were supposed to be doing and are doing is not the same thing. It wasn't clear. All of those things that I just mentioned, those six behaviors, those cables, when you demonstrate those, and there are two questions that I will put with each of those, and I call them your daily dozen. You ask these questions, I guarantee you that if you've got a problem in a relationship that you're, that you're having, whether it's at work, in the community, at home, if you go down that list of those behaviors, you own something on that list. And the faster you can identify what that piece is that you own, the faster you're going to repair the bridge. Wow. That's, that is, to me, the, the model that when we act in that way, we create an environment where we support, we challenge, and we celebrate each other. Those three things. Boom. Wow. What a knowledge bone. Lead to greatness. I definitely hope you're you're taking notes. Um, if someone wanted to connect with you and what you're doing, where, where should they go? Yeah, so, um, well, a couple of ways. One, you can certainly email me and my email is patrick at, and it's emeryleadershipgroup.com and it's E-M-E-R-Y for Emery. Um, and actually, Emery was my dad's uh, middle name. That's how I came up with the company. Awesome. Um, I also, I, I run a podcast as well called uh, Learning From Leaders. So they can, they can listen there. Instagram, I'm Coach Patrick V. Twitter, I'm at Coach Patrick V. 
three to four different ways that you can you can reach out to me. And I, I, as I'm sure you're the same way on this, we love any opportunity we can to talk about this stuff. Absolutely. Love it. <laughs> Absolutely. Right? We love it. Absolutely. Man, this is so awesome. <laughs> what an amazing interview. Definitely the lead to greatness community. We are all better because of it. Patrick, on behalf of the Lead to Greatness community, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule and adding value to us. Yeah, no, thank you. I am always so honored to be on on any show that wants to look at how do we help other people get better and, and improve ourselves. Any opportunity, I, I love taking that. So thank you for, for giving me that platform. And don't forget to subscribe to Lead to Greatness if this is your first time. And this podcast was helpful to you. Leave a big thumbs up. And also, I want you to check out our Marriage Coach Podcast, the podcast with my wife and I. If you're on iTunes, please rate this podcast and leave a review and help get the word out. Again, thank you, Lead to Greatness Nation, for joining us on today. Looking forward to seeing you again on next week. Till then, remember, if you help others reach their greatest potential, together we can change the world. Peace, we out.